Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the first leg of the quarterfinals review here on my channel. Um, this is how things stand in a way. We have City, Chelsea, Real Madrid number one, two, three at the moment. I am wearing PSG. I realized the other day when I put up the jersey that honestly I don't really have a horse in this Champions League fight anymore but I remembered. I really used to like PSG, so maybe that's where I'm going. I also used to like Chelsea, but I'm not so sold on Chelsea at this moment uh, in time. That was back in the day, 90s and so on, when both teams I thought were rather exciting. And then there were a few things in between that uh, kind of changed my opinion on those as well. But Champions League, Champions League we're talking. Um, I think it was a very interesting quarterfinal round. Uh, quite a few goals in there as well. The game of the round definitely was Bayern against PSG, which I didn't necessarily expect to be, but that was a wholly enthralling game. Uh, with seemingly the advantage now going to PSG, hence I'm wearing PSG. But I am not so sure if it will be going forward. But yeah, uh, very impressive performance, especially on the back of that uh, third performance against Lille on the weekend. I also thought that Real Madrid against Liverpool um, was rather surprising the way things went, but um, Real Madrid, I think, is a little bit underestimated in this competition. A uh, very good performance by Dortmund, we also saw that. Um, comparatively very, very good still, City pull up the win. And Porto, uh, almost similar to Bayern, having many shots and chances. However, in the end, it's the opponent, Chelsea, who gets the win. And Chelsea is another one of those teams that would be really... is a little bit underestimated at the, at the moment. But, you know, uh, you definitely would like the chances to go to a final, especially given the draw. I would say... Uh, give you my thoughts on each game. I mean, as I already said, Manchester City against Dortmund, the first game we'll be talk, talking about. Um, I think Dortmund played quite well. Uh, again, given their, uh, their status in the league and also very bad performance against Frankfurt, I thought that Manchester City will do like they did to Gladbach and just roll over them. And it almost seemed that way when uh, Emre Can played a horrible pass. Uh, that was in, it was intercepted and then uh, De Bruyne, Foden and Mares run on to, uh, uh, on to goal in a 4v4 uh, and De Bruyne finishes in the 19th. I really thought, yeah, um, now Dortmund will fall apart, but they didn't. Uh, and that is huge credit to them. Yes, Emre Can was a little bit almost on the verge of combusting there. Uh, he seemingly had committed a penalty foul that rightfully was called off. Uh, I think if that penalty was given in the 30th, um, around the 30th, I think um, Dortmund would, would have fallen apart, but it didn't. And then uh, Jude Bellingham actually scores the equalizer. Who horrible decision I have to say by the Romanian rever referee. Um, he calls the play dead. I mean, uh, the ball goes to Ederson who cannot really nicely control it and Jude Bellingham intercepts it. Yes, he comes down with the foot a little bit, but this was in no way a foul and uh, just let the game run and then look at it on VAR. And I think here the problem is, I don't know this for a fact, but since uh, I wouldn't assume any different. I think there's no VAR in the Romanian league. And so it's rather tough, you know, the, the instincts take over for the Romanian referee who didn't have a good game all over. I mean, even the decision to call a penalty, uh, I mean, it was overturned by VAR, but that was not a great call, uh, to be honest. I mean, even if you've seen in life, uh, pick pictures. And so uh, Dortmund sh was robbed, honestly. I think uh, that should, that should, 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 but Dortmund really hung in there. Um, especially, I think, in the first 30 minutes of the second half, the game was rather even. There was not much happening. I mean, more... Most of the stuff was definitely happening uh, at the same time in the Real Madrid Liverpool game. Um, he ma uh, he made some interesting choices uh, for substitutions that I actually also th uh, thought worked well, except I wouldn't necessarily have brought on Meunier. But then Dortmund gets the equalizer uh, when Haaland plays a really nice ball to uh, Reus. And uh, they get what I at the moment thought was a deserved equalizer. 
However, they cannot hang on uh, because Meunier loses the ball and it's individual errors. I think Dortmund could have gotten a really good result if they uh, would not have had those individual errors. And uh, so Gündogan and Foden play through and give Manchester City a 2-1 win. Um, I think Dortmund definitely would have deserved a draw out of that one. My personal opinion. Um, however, City uh, is still very much the favorite of going through, even if it would have been a draw. Um, going to Valde Bebas. <laughs> I still cannot get past the fact, yes, I think it's all right because there are no uh, speculators play, but seeing Real Madrid playing in that small stadium, and to be honest, put the camera on the other side, then you have at least a big uh, stand there. Uh, it makes it a little bit more look like a stadium than uh, the other. It, it just doesn't look right to to, to the world. But it also didn't look right what Liverpool was going. I mean, both teams playing with second string uh, defenses. So you were always, you thought there will be goals in there. And the question is who will um, exploit those we weakness and then it comes down to the midfield and yeah Real Madrid won that battle I, I I keep hearing it and I keep saying it if the likes of Casemiro, Kroos and Modric can dominate and especially Casemiro Mo, uh, Kroos and Modric are very much there for the um, creative pull out up, 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 up and forward but Casemiro is definitely the one who is the kind of the sweeper in front of the back line who covers a whole lot of space behind. Casemiro is one of the most underrated and most important players in Europe uh, for quite a while. Uh, if he is playing well, Real Madrid is doing super well. Um, however, it was always uh, deep balls from Kroos that caught out the Liverpool defense on both of the goals. Um, the first one, really nice deep ball from Kroos to uh, Vinicius Jr., uh, who uh, I think caught uh, the Liverpool defender completely out of um, uh, position, uh, Phillips. And uh, if Vinicius Jr. scores against you, you really have, have, have a problem. If you've watched Real Madrid, Vinicius Jr.'s is a great player that does not have one thing. It's an end product. He got the end product now. It's 1-0. A little bit later, the other uh, defender, uh, uh, Alexander Arnold, again, deep ball by Kroos. He, I don't know what, what he's doing, but he heads it right into Asensio, makes it 2-0. And Real Madrid deserved every bit of that lead. Um, the game then uh, F went to half, half, half time. I mean, Klopp made, made some change by taking uh, Naabi Keita, who I think he wanted to dominate the mid midfield, but you know, Casemiro. So he brought Alcant uh, Thiago on uh, for a Alcantara for a little bit more um, balance, I guess, uh, and more input uh, going forward. And right to the start of uh, second half, uh, Liverpool actually uh, started out brightly you thought the game is going it de definitely their way and Salah gets a typical again a typical Salah goal uh, to make it 2-1 um, and then Liverpool were pressing it was really looking like 2-2 uh, is in the cards and then they get caught on the counter -act. where again before that already there was a count car, car counter where they just in intercepted then there's a um, corner corner kick from that uh, that results in a throw in from, from the throw in the ball uh, Mot the motor plays against with Vinicius Junior who gets a double I mean, that I cannot believe. And so, that ended the game. Liverpool seemingly out. Yeah. Well, let's go to the big one. Bayern, PSG. And yes, the weather that they had in Munich, uh, we had to have the same weather here. On the weekend, we just had a little bit warmth. 15, 6, 16 degrees uh, centigrade. And now we have snow in the spring. Uh, doesn't make much much sense. A little bit of you know, April weather, but you know. Um, the conditions, I think, played a big role in that game as well. Uh, I also think what PSG put out in terms of clinically finishing uh, has to be uh, definitely stated as a, a as as a special fact because I did not see that coming at all. Uh, I really thought that Bayern's gonna eat them up. In a way, they did, but Bayern couldn't convert. Uh, Kayla Navas was Navas was standing on his head. And whenever uh, PSG got in front of the Bayern goal, they more or less scored. Um, started already in the third minute. 
by uh, Chupa Moting just had hit the crossbar, and that would have been, I mean, that Chupa Moting uh, would score against uh, PSG almost seemed inevitable. Uh, and then right from that uh, at attack, the ball comes to Neymar, who uh, sees Mbappé to, also to, to the right, who cuts in, takes a hard shot uh, that I think Neuer has to save, but I again think due to the cold con 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 conditions, the ball was a little bit uh, hard and uh, hard to control in, in a way, and it goes through his legs in, into net. Definitely a goal on Neuer, but Mbappé again showing his great form, especially away from home in the Champions League, like he did in Barcelona. Uh, Bayern, of course, relentlessly pressuring PSG. Um, but then again, call cut out, and again, it's Neymar, who uh, the commentator has a lot of fun with. But let's first finish that. I always tend to do that. I'm uh, talking about one CCC edition, and I can call it in something else before I finish, hopefully, up, up again. Neymar playing a nice ball. I think it was a, a, from a corner kick or free kick. Plays a ball then to Marquinhos, uh, who can pull it in the internet, and it's 2 0 PSG uh, or, or in the 28th minute. and. I could not believe that scoreline. I even on German TV they really could, could, couldn't believe it because everything else in the game was pointing towards Bayern, who really Kayla Navas made some great saves in there. Uh, and the pressure got got higher and higher. Um, but you know, if you're a good good goalie, you're gonna uh, you're gonna be a good ov ov overall. Um, Neymar, the commentator, had a lot of fun with Neymar, who. Didn't want to go down this time. He didn't want to go or go to go down, down this time, and then he got it. Yeah, the floor is cold. He doesn't want to go down <laughs> because it's too cold, cold for him. Uh, yeah, uh, he doesn't have a great reputation, especially for German com com commentators. Um, yeah, but I under I I understand it. But I think Neymar played decent, and you know, assisting two goals uh, in the first half definitely uh, making his presence felt. I think things got really shaky for PSG when Marquinhos, just two minutes after he scored the goal, needed to come off with a muscle injury. And this was also one thing that uh, you, the game cause, had, had a lot of casualties because of those weather conditions. It was cold, it was rainy. Uh, the backside of, of the pitch was covered in snow and I was really wondering why they played with the white ball instead of a red ball almost. It, it, it seemed a little bit weird overall. Uh, Another one that needed to come up three minutes later is Leon Goretzka for uh, uh, for for Davis. I don't think that Flick will take off Goretzka. I mean, I don't have a cover, but I think Goretzka was also injured. Goretzka doesn't come off uh, in the first half uh, for tech for tech tech reasons. Um, so there was uh, the next uh, in, in injury in the meantime. Uh, PSG defense now has to be or as by under Herrera, and you know. The, uh, the, they didn't have a great defense out there. Um, Pavard can have a free cross and Chupamoting heads. He didn't get his goal against PSG, but not only now to put Bayern a little bit back back in the game. I really thought that Bayern could probably have equalized. Then another substitution for Bayern. And Bayern had already used up two substitutions in the first half, but also two substitution windows. You get only three during, during the game. That, to me, was a pretty big deal right there. And, and, and I thought if um, Flick had to make tackling changes, he better dust them uh, right at halftime. And I think there was there was another player that seemingly had to come off, but didn't come off. Sule came off and Boateng came on, and that also played, played a role. However, um, Baka... I can't know for, for the other. I also think this was injury related. Um, and in the beginning of the second half, I mean, it was all Bayern. And it was so deserved when Müller had it in. And at that point, you're really thinking 2 2 for Bayern. And now it's going to go even worse. Uh, Bayern is going to win that game. And PSG uh, will dig themselves into a hole when they looked really, really, really good. But exactly the opposite happened. Uh, the defense of Bayern, that was their frailty today. And. Um, but uh, when the attack came over Di Maria to Mbappé, yes, it is not easy to do what he did to take on um, Boateng and the Bayern defense, but to, to be honest, Boateng doesn't even interfere there. And so he makes it 3-2. Uh, and 
I thought that uh, Bayern would, would have deserved an equal, but PSG hang on onto that, and I think in large part due to um, uh, Kayla Navas really making great saves. He was the hero of the, of the game. And as I said, in adverse con 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 conditions, I even thought when Di, Di Maria came off, um, that was maybe tactically as well, but Di Maria also didn't look uh, around it again. Uh, Moya Moisekan gave him a lot of physical presence up front. Uh, and then at, at the very Mbappé also, kind of limping off the field. It was a game that caused a lot of ca casualties, but it was an exciting game. Um, the other game, Porto against Chelsea. Don't want, I mean, again, Porto having many shots, many chances. Chelsea with the first shot and goal, a brilliant move by Mason Mount. Spin move uh, makes it 1 0, and Chelsea then actually just controls the game without having much possession. I never thought that once it was 1 0, the Porto is gonna really come back, unfortunately. Um, and then late on, Chilwell makes it 2 0, settles the game, and Chelsea really looking pretty there. With these results, we have now um, following standings, uh, or standings, the chances Manchester City and Chelsea are the top two. Favorites Manchester City because they are by far the better team, um, and Chelsea because they are the more favorable side of the draw. We'll look at that in just just a little bit. Real Madrid and PSG put themselves in good position. PSG now a seventy percent favorite over Bayern. I don't trust this at all. Um, if Bayern would have had better finishing, or if Bayern would have had Lewandowski, they probably would have won the game against PSG. Yes, the league in goals. I think it's not beyond Bayern to go into Paris and win. Uh, by two goals, like a 3-1 or 4-2 or whatever. I think this is very well in, in the cards. Liverpool has a 20% chance of advancing over Real Madrid. I, that is a harder uh, task, I think. If there were fans, I think Liverpool could do it. I, otherwise, I'm not so sure, to, 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 to be honest. So, yeah, um, the favorites for the final at the moment, Manchester City and Chelsea. And if you look at the three, you really can see, I mean, Bayern PSG has to play the win against Manchester City, Dortmund, which is most likely Manchester City. Um, so, yeah, um, arguably, and I say ar arguably because PSG, I don't trust... But arguably the three best teams in the upper half of, 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 of this bracket. And, you know, Chelsea will now have a relatively easy game also in Sevilla. The idea to mention both games will be played in Sevilla. Go figure. Covid re re regulars, of, of course. And then against Real Madrid, um, most likely. Many fans like Chelsea over Real Madrid. I honestly think don't underestimate Real Madrid. Um, if I had to put my money, I'm not... Betting. I'm working in the industry, but I'm not betting. Uh, I, I actually would think Real Madrid will make it to the final. I really have a feeling that Real Madrid uh, will make the final. I thought that wh whoever wins Real Madrid, Liverpool is probably the favorite to go to the final there. So yeah, the games next week. Uh, it's played on Tuesday. Uh, the, f uh, the games that we had on Wednesday, so with Chelsea against Portland and PSG Bayern, who, where all the attention will be on. And then, yeah, maybe we get some in the end inter inter interesting games uh, with Dortmund and Liverpool, who usually enjoy a lot of good home support, which might help this time around. I don't think it, it is, will happen. I think a City and Real Madrid will get easy wins and then we'll get some interesting semifinals. In any case, let me know what you thought about the games. Um, this uh in this quarter in this quarter final uh give me a thumbs up enjoy this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and i will talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, i get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye